on Master Chef Canada. Surprise! A birthday cake mystery box inspired stunning results. This is a league of its own. This cake is about love. And a grueling elimination challenge ended. Kristen, I'm sorry. With a tearful goodbye. Tonight. The wedding guests are drinking champagne and they need those canopies. Come on, let's get organized here. It's all hands on deck for a Harbor Cruise wedding. It needs to be perfect. The stakes are so high when it's somebody's wedding. But will the top 10 serve up a feast? Wow. Oh God, right on top. Or a fiasco. There's a hair on it. Okay. Isn't that a nice wedding gift? A hair. The sun has just risen over Toronto's two waterfronts, and the top 10 home cooks are about to face their next team challenge. I'm feeling fantastic being in the top 10. I'm pumped. We are all dressed up in our Sunday best and then some. Am I gonna be cooking in these clothes? Ahoy, top 10. Welcome to Toronto, Ontario's beautiful harbor front. Every year, millions of people come to this beautiful waterfront to experience art galleries, amazing live music, and food festivals. Toronto Harbor is also home to the Mariposa Cruise Line's impressive fleet of hospitality ships. Your challenge today is twofold. First of all, you have to cook on the top deck of this ship as it cruises Toronto's spectacular harbor. This is definitely going to be the first time to cook on a boat. But the second and most important aspect of your challenge is that you'll be making canapes, appetizers, and entrees for a lovely young couple named Kim and Erwan, and the large group of friends and family that they've invited to their harbor cruise wedding. Meal at a wedding is not something that you can just screw up and, and take lightly. This is a monumental moment in Kim and Erwan's life. The stakes are so high when it's somebody's wedding. I should know, I've got two under my belt. It needs to be perfect in every way. But the pressure doesn't end there. Erwan's family has flown all the way from Paris, and you're gonna be cooking for a wedding party of French foodies. <laughs> These French foodies are really gonna know their stuff. I love French food, I know French food, I will rock that. Michael, you had the best dish in the last elimination challenge, which makes you captain of the red team. And Andrew, you had the second best dish, so you're captain of the blue team. Captains, come and get your aprons. Michael, you get the first pick. I have a master list. A master list that is filled with every possibility of every pick of every team. Let's see if it comes true. Because of their refined skills, I'm gonna pick Christopher. Me? First pick? Welcome to the red team. They know we're doing the can of pigs. He's a mad scientist when it comes to anything big. Andrew, who's your first pick? David. I know what he can do in the kitchen. Michael. Who's your next pick? Sabrina. <laughs> I want someone organized and understands how a line works. That's Sabrina. Andrew. This person oozes French refinement. That's obviously Cody. Cody thinks he knows everything about French cuisine, but no, he knows the words. He doesn't know how to put them on a plate. Tammy. <laughs> Flynn. Michael, you get to choose your final pick. I'm probably getting picked last again. I picked Jennifer. <laughs> what? <laughs> what the heck is going through his head? Has he figured out that I'm actually a worthy competitor? I picked Jennifer for the sole reason to screw with Andrew's mind. <laughs> that was the only reason. John, you were a little surprised to be the last man standing? I don't know if I, I've ever been picked last before. <laughs> New feeling for me. Okay, go join the blue team. All right. I'm happy to be on Andrew's team. We have David, we have Cody, we have Lynn. We got a dream team. This team that we've got set up, it is such a bizarre combination. We're all deemed basically as underdogs. Everyone thinks that Andrew has a strong team, but that blue team, everyone's gonna be speaking their ideas, and Cody's gonna wanna use 127 ingredients. Read him a weep, Andrew. My plan is coming together. Be given five minutes to plan their menus. And it's extremely important that the bride and groom are happy with the dishes that you create. But in the end, we will decide which team wins. 
and which team faces the pressure test. Your time starts now! Each team must create a menu with ingredients chosen by the bride and groom. The three courses will feature a big appetizer, a duck entree, and a canapé. The canapé is a mushroom ragu over top of puff pastry. As a team captain, I'm going to be decisive. I have to make snap decisions. Don't make it too complicated. Stuff the fig with the herb goat cheese, wrap it around in prosciutto. I'm going to make sure that each individual team member is doing what they know how to do better than me. Let's do this. 70 guests, French food, and on a boat. And this is a wedding. This is an opportunity to celebrate and go big. And they're French. They're going to be the biggest critics they have faced yet. And those tough critics, plus the bride and groom, are now arriving. Congratulations to both of you. Thank you. Delighted to have you with us. And our home cooks are busy cooking up on the upper deck. They're motivated and excited to make this the most memorable meal of your lives. Are you ready to go on board? I am. Let's go. Okay. After you. The teams will have only 30 minutes to create canapes that will be served after the ceremony. Can you mix olive oil and chop some chives? Yes, sir. Canapé is an olive oil and herb crostini with a wild mushroom ragu, parmesan, arugula, balsamic production. Lynn, how's your sauce? Coming along perfect. I have an all-star cast here. Like, there's no, I don't know what Michael was thinking, but like, I can't believe he gave up these players. Michael made a big mistake. Chris, how you looking? Come on in. Christopher is completely in charge of canapés. Walnut blue cheese cream puff. Things are really organized right now. I'm loving my team. Everyone knows exactly what they're doing, and that's what matters. Below deck, Kim and Erwan's ceremony is underway. A love which will encourage you to follow your dreams and to nurture your gifts as you share your inspiring love with the family and friends who gather with you here today. It's 15 minutes to the canapes are served. Got it. 15 minutes left, let's do this. This puff pastry, I'm trying to get it caramelized as much as possible. I should just crank this up to max. My puff pastry comes out and it's pale, but we have no time to fix it. How are they? They're good, they're good. Okay, I'm gonna cut you stuff. In five minutes, they need to be done. In the next 10 minutes, they all have to be done. Get faster, come on, guys. Michael. Hello, chefs, how are you? Very good, we're here oh. to taste the canapes before they go out. This is a blue cheese, walnut, creme fraiche, cream puff filling with a nice caramelized glaze on top. It tastes like very, very nice, very nice. Are you concerned about this? It's the best thing to eat. Christopher, don't fill them up too much. That's right, a little less generous on the cheese. It has to be elegant and easy to eat. You have to listen to the judge's advice in this competition. The canapé has to be the wow moment. It's gotta be beautiful, it's gotta be a piece of art. Chef, how much what we have? So we have the uh, toasted baguettes. Uh, you have a mushroom ragu, a toasted pine nut puree on there as well, finished off with some aged balsamic vinegar. Hmm. Great. Thank you. Carry on, guys. Yes. There's no possibility we could lose at this point. We're just, we just can feel it. It is my honor and it is my delight to declare you married. Down below, the wedding party is ready to celebrate with champagne and canapes. Time's up! Get those canopies out the door! The service is over here. The most important thing in this challenge is that every single plate leaves this kitchen on time. While the red team's canapes are being served, the blue team is still fussing with their plating. I'm unwilling to sacrifice the complexity of my menu for the ease of getting it out. John, yeah. can you pull off what you're doing and help us? Come on, everyone. The wedding guests are drinking champagne, and they need those canopies. Move, move, move. We're done here. That's service. We're done. Done. Okay, done. The guests now get to choose which canopy they like better. The red team's savory cream puffs with walnut and blue cheese filling, or the blue team's crostini with wild mushroom ragu and creme fraiche. I really like the red. It's sweet and savory. I like the, the two different tasties in my mouth. It's uh, very nice. My favorite was the blue team's mushroom canopy. But the most important opinion belongs to the bride. Thank you. There's a hair on there. The red team has a hair on it. Yeah, I'm a little bit disappointed. Michael. Yes, Michael, chef. Michael. Yes, come chef. here, come here, come here. One of the guests found a hair in one of your canopies. Oh my god. It was the bride. Oh my god. The bride. Isn't that a nice wedding gift? A hair. Get it together. Everyone say yes, chef. Yes, yes chef. chef. Yes, chef. 
even though the red team may have been on top of things in terms of getting their canopies and hors d'oeuvres out quickly, it is quality that wins over in the end. They're winning for speed, but they're losing for quality. Below deck, the wedding guests have been seated, and the teams have 15 minutes to plate their fig appetizers. You guys, we have to make up for lost time in that last service. Can somebody please grate the cucumber and make sure they're yes. watering down, please? Yes. Lynn has instilled trust in me that she is going to bang out a beautiful appetizer. Guys, this is now the Lynn show, so whatever Lynn says goes, okay? My appetizer is cucumbers and figs and fagra. Do you need sugar on these, Lynn? How heavy, how heavy on the sugar, Lynn? Sprinkle like you would salt. What do you want for flavor, Lynn? Uh, nothing too strong. There are five cooks in the kitchen, and only one of them knows what's happening with this appetizer. And it's not the leader. You want these in the oven? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna put them all in at the same time, okay, though. Okay, here. I'm end of line on this next batch. We cannot have another hair in this, guys. The appetizer is the fig flour. They're fancy, they're easy, and they're delicious. Great job with the fake, Sabrina. Christopher. Yeah? You're overcrowding your pan, and you're gonna have a soupy mess. Things are all water. Okay, thank you, Jeff. Everything's looking good. Let's start plating right now. All right, gentlemen. Chef? It looks very small. We need to dress this with some greens. We need to dress this. Okay, can you do one that is finished so we see it exactly the way the guests are going to get yes. it? Oh, look, look, okay. So if I put fig, fig, and fig there on arugula. Andrew, take charge. Yes, take okay. charge. Okay, guys, more figs, more arugula. Okay, that's it. I just need something to bulk up this plate. So we decide to add brie and add a small arugula salad. We're going to readjust and we're going to Andrew, this is where you got to dig deep and lead your team. Yes, chef. Yes, chef. Andrew is losing control of his kitchen. Hey guys, we're gonna have some brie on here. What do you got here? It's a fig wrapped in prosciutto, stuffed with an herb cheese, garnished with some nice crostinis. And what's the dressing? The dressing is just a simple vinaigrette. That's a nice portion. How does it taste, though? We're waiting for you to see. You mean you haven't tasted it, and you're asking us to taste it. You taste it first. OK. Wow. Whose idea was it to do this dish? Sabrina, is it your idea? Yes, Chef. I think it's a good idea. Chef Claudio is impressed. <laughs> it's amazing. But I think you have a home run. Okay? Thank you, Chef. I'm over the moon. Chris, I need you to be more mindful with the croutons, sure okay? Listen to Sabrina. This is her dish. She earns the respect. You have one minute till you get those appetizers out. One minute. The servers are here, so move it. We have no production line, no organization. It's like we are surprised that we had to serve the food. That's way too much arugula back there. Yeah. Cody, you're supposed to be plating. Come on, yeah. let's get organized here. Jesus. And all of a sudden, he doesn't want to be the plater because he doesn't know how to put it on the plate. Keep the figs tight to the filo, OK? You hear me? Andrew, you're falling behind. No, we're not. The we're red going. team let's is go. crushing it out. Yeah, perfect. This looks good, this looks good, and this looks good as well. There was no flag. Get on those plates. Where's the arugula? Where's the, where's the salad? We should be almost there, guys. Just for you. Apologies from the blue team. Thank you. It looks beautiful. Congratulations. Thank you. How was your food? Good. Really good. So which team, the blue team or the red team, stood out in terms of quality, creativity, and flavor? The red team, because it was easy to try all the ingredients of the plate, and the temperature was very important for me to appreciate the, the fig. Was the fig still warm? The fig was still warm. I appreciated maybe a little bit more the contrast of the blue team. The fluffy texture mixed with the, the cool fig, the warm sauces. I, I did I did like blue. A little bit of division happening here. Well, congratulations again. 
Now that the appetizers have been served, the blue and red teams will start their duck entrees. This is the most important thing happening right now because this is the entree. You don't screw with the entree. Guys, we haven't we haven't gone down yet. We can have a chance to recover here, okay? And let's have this service perfect. Now the red team is doing duck breasts with some potatoes, which looks like they're cooked in duck fat, and they're putting a kumquat puree. The blue team, they have got some wilted watercress and leek that they've seasoned up with a little butter, salt and pepper as a base. They've got carrots that they've roasted off nicely in some duck fat. Salt and pepper both sides? I haven't peppered, and I'm only I'll on one side. i get the pepper right now. Yeah. The wind is blowing in the wrong directions, and I've got pepper flying into my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you. She finished all the ducks and then had to go get the pepper out of her eye. And I'm really proud to have her on my team. You're doing great, Jennifer. Thank you. Everyone's doing amazing. John, what are you up to? Scoring these breasts still. 40 prepped. The main event is the duck, and I'm gonna make sure it's perfect. If we get this main right, I think we still got it. Where's the plate? That's beautiful. Wow. Oh, it looks very nice, nicely presented. Just make sure you render that fat down a lot more on the duck. See all that raw fat? I'm really worried right now. I didn't sear those duck breasts off properly. I've really compromised our win here. What do you have here, the potato? This is potato and peas that are both cooked in the duck fat. Overall, it's a good dish. I just wish the fat was cooked up. That looks phenomenal, okay? We need that sauce. If we don't rally to put this main course out, we're gonna lose this challenge, and one of us is going home. Sauce. Sauce! Sauce! It's coming! Coming can't be the answer. We have the chef tasting right now. I'm going as quick as I can, and Cody's in the back. Where's my sauce? Where's my sauce? The sauce is the only component we're missing. Two seconds. I'm two okay. seconds away. All right, you guys, we're here to try the dish. Are we doing with the sauce, Lynn? I'm gonna give you some. Come on, we already tasted that dish. What's wrong? Come on. Okay, okay. okay. This looks this looks nice, though, guys. Yeah. Thank you, chef. Thank you, chef. The sauce is still thickening. It's still okay. thickening. I can't make a reduction in 10 minutes. I'm sorry. That's the best I could do. This is not okay. Well, you wanted it. It's not. A, it's not ready yet. Andrew, whose idea was to make that sauce? It was my idea. The sauce is a disaster. It will not be ready until Kim and Erwan are on a plane to their honeymoon. You know what? You know what? No sauce. I got molasses is on this bottle. It's on this bottle. We're, we're here. And Done. We don't have a sauce. The only thing that I can think of is to put this pomegranate molasses on the plate and hope that it tastes good for the duck. OK, well, this is a nice recovery. That looks a lot nicer. And who cooked the duck? John and David did. That duck looks perfect. Nicely cooked duck. Wow. Woo! We need a wing, guys, and this looks beautiful. I got to tell you, Andrew. Yes, chef. Very nice dish. Thank you, chef. We can still pull it off. We're good. Here comes the server. Come on, come on. You guys, let's get this duck moving. How do you want it? Please tell me. You see? Half circle. OK, half time. circle. Do not let them take them if they have no pomegranates. Reveal the winner. Red team and blue team, you've just made it through an incredibly difficult and important challenge. Preparing a French inspired menu for Kim and Erwan's Harbor Cruise wedding. We want to wish you congratulations on your very special day. And well done to all of you. It's amazing what you just did. Now it's time to find out which team weathered the storm and which team got lost at sea. We have asked the newlyweds to announce the winner by cutting into this wedding cake. Will you please do the honors? Will you cut? Sure. I messed up the entrees. I'm really worried right now. Hide it. I don't want to look. I can't even look at that cake. Seems like it's going in slow motion. Ready? 
please be a red cake? We are not going to the pressure test. It's red, it's awesome. Feeling good about myself, I'm feeling good about my team. First team challenge that I've won. I am so excited, I could just burst. My kids are gonna be so proud. Congratulations, red team. Blue team, you lost this challenge, and you will now face the dreaded pressure test. My heart is just, just destroyed. At the end of which, at least one of you will leave the MasterChef Canada kitchen. One of the five of us is going home. Blue team, red team, we'll see you back in the MasterChef Canada kitchen tomorrow. I really wouldn't mind being on a winning team here one of these days. Bottom line, we lost. We're in the pressure test. We need to take responsibility, suck it up, let's be adults, let's go to the pressure test. It's the day after the Harbor Crew's wedding, and Andrew's blue team prepares to face the pressure test. I'm not happy about this pressure test. I'm gonna do my dangdest to pull it out. My heart's beating a million miles an hour. I can actually feel it popping out of my chest. I don't know what's gonna happen today. Welcome back, everyone. You all did a fantastic job yesterday, cooking for the stunning Harbor Crew's wedding. Both teams created gorgeous French-inspired dishes. Red team, congratulations. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Blue team, your dishes were almost as impressive as the red team's, but your presentation and your timing dragged your efforts down. Andrew, what do you think happened yesterday? I don't think we performed poorly. We put out dishes that were really tasty. Unfortunately, our timing was a little bit off. You reacted to that, Cody. From concept to execution, there was absolutely no communication. We weren't organized. There was no one on plates. We figured it out by the entree. By that time, it's way too late. We already screwed up the whole damn thing. David, where do you see things falling apart? It was all about timing. I blame myself on mine. And instead of starting to plate, I went on to something else. Andrew, David seems to be owning up to some of the blame. But more importantly, you as a leader, who do you think was your weakest link here? I don't think that way, Chef. Sorry, I can't answer it. Just answer, man. No. I refuse. Ultimately, it comes down to the leader. It comes down to Andrew. So, Andrew, you're not willing to tell us who was the weakest link within the team. But what I'm curious about, is there not someone within your team that performed above your expectation? No. If you have the chance to save someone today, Will it be you or a team member? It's a tough question. I, I, I think we're at the point in the competition where I would save myself. Andrew, you don't have to make that difficult decision. All five of you will be cooking in the pressure test. Damn. And Two of you will be going home. Oh my God. This is the most fearsome pressure test in MasterChef Canada history. To survive it, you're gonna need nerves of steel. Pressure is on. This is the time to focus. This is the time to just get in the zone. Are you ready to find out which dish you're going to have to master? Yes, yes Chef. Chef. Delicious French fruit tart. A French fruit tart? I have very little experience with any type of pastry, and especially one that looks like that. The secret to this beautiful dessert is finding the perfect balance between several stunning components. First, the buttery pastry, which must be baked to a crisp and flaky golden brown. Secondly, a silky smooth layer of vanilla bean pastry cream stirred to the perfect consistency. And to top it all off, a stunning arrangement of fresh fruit, all coated in a deliciously light apple glaze. The slightest misstep could end your MasterChef Canada journey. Please come up and have a taste. 
I'm from New Brunswick. I've never seen a French fruit tart at any of the bakeries that I go to. This is way out of my expertise. This is gonna be hard. This is gonna be really difficult to replicate. I'm not really as strong with dessert as I am with savory stuff, but you know what? I'm gonna bring it. I'm gonna make a perfect pastry. It's gonna be art in a tart. Good luck, and please go to your stations. This is not gonna be an easy challenge. Seeing that so many strong home cooks are down there, it's gonna be a dogfight. At your stations, you'll find everything you need to replicate this delicious French dessert, and 45 minutes to do it in. Are you ready? Yes, yes chef. chef. Your time starts now. I'm so nervous right now, and I'm not even cooking. This is on. I don't do pastry. I don't do pastry at all. I'm going to need a miracle today. Luckily, I believe in miracles. Making perfect pastry under a 45-minute time clock is never, ever easy. This is the first time two cooks are going home in a pressure test. You can cut the tension here with a knife. The pressure is huge. You know, this is a replication challenge. That there are three major components to making this French fruit tart. The pastry, the pastry cream, and fruit. Today has to be a shining moment for me. The strategy here is to not make any mistakes. It's got to be perfect. Refined pastry crust is key. You've got to delicately work the pastry. They have to cook that pastry to perfection. If it's too thin, it'll break. If it's too thick, it'll be raw in the middle. The pastry cream, you have to whip up your egg yolks with the sugar, scald your milk and cream, and slowly cook it out. Then you can flavor it with your vanilla. You can't improvise with pastry. You either do it well, or it's a disaster. There's nowhere to hide. Come on up. Worried about David here? Dough is sticking. I'm looking at a mess. Keep on trying to pull it off. It's not working. This is horrible. I'm starting again. You gotta make it beautiful. It's gotta taste good. It's gotta look good. A lot of things to go wrong. John, how you feeling? Hey, chef. Feeling great, chef. I'm used to working under pressure. I love it. Who do you think is going home? Probably Andrew's going home. His nerves are getting to him. Who's the other one? I don't know. So it's not going to be you, eh? Oh, no, it's definitely not. <laughs> I'm not going home. Well, I'll leave you dead. Good luck. Andrew. Hello, Chef. How are you feeling? I'm not feeling super confident, but you know what? I'm not going home with a fight, so. A lot of your fellow home cooks after the team challenge seem very frustrated oh. with you. Yeah. I, I feel guilty about that. So who do you think's going home? I think it's a possibility John might go home today. John, really? Yeah. I don't think he's going to pull it out. I haven't looked back. I'm running my own race right now, Chef. It's not my concern what he's doing. I just want to be better. All right, we'll keep your eye on the clock. Thank you, Chef. All right, good luck. Thank you. When I get stressed at home, I bake, which is very befitting in this situation. Lynn has this focus that I have not seen in her yet. Andrew seems to be very nervous. He is running all over the place super fast, like a jackrabbit. I need to fight to win. Cody is lagging behind right now. He doesn't have good time management. I'm trying to plan three steps ahead here. David. The yes, chef. How are you feeling right now? Is this in your comfort zone? It certainly isn't. I'm more of a bourbon milkshake kind of guy. Is there any component uh, you might find particularly difficult? The presentation, it's just it's not my wheelhouse. How did it make you feel when you have two people going home on this challenge? It's certainly up the stakes. Well, I think you've surprised yourself before in this competition. Yeah, have, chef. Mm -hmm. Carry on. Good luck with it. Come on, let's get going! The tart should be out and your cream should be in. I pull the tart out. And it's looking good. I'm going to keep on pushing. Do my best to make it look beautiful and taste delicious. Pastry truth is delicate. I'm looking down, and I see John using a spatula to smear his pastry cream on. Well, these big hands are soft, so I'll be all right. I'm going to start cutting my fruits. This tart has to be very exact. If it's not perfect, I'm going home. Look at Lynn. Look at the way she handles the knife precision. Fruits have to be cut exactly the same. It has to be cut perfectly. Ten minutes! You have ten minutes left. Holy Hannah. Cody's in the most trouble right now. Cody can't seem to get his pastry off of the pan. Look at 
to Cody. He's losing valuable time. It's not cooperating very nicely. My God. He is so far behind right now. I'm nervous at this point. There you go. He's got it. Yes, thank you. I need to hurry up. I need every single second that I have. Cody's in serious trouble. He still has to put all the fruit down, plus he has to glaze. I don't think Cody's gonna make it. I have to move. I really, really, really have to move. Final two minutes! This is really freaking intense, man. Feel me now, Hans? You're going home today. Oh, John is the first one to actually start glazing. You glaze the top of the fruit, it's gotta be clean sheen, so it looks like glass. Good. This is cutting it really close. Cody's not gonna make it. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hands up! Amazing. Relief. <laughs> I think that I'm gonna be okay. I'm looking over at the other people's. I'm going, I got this. It's time to taste your French fruit tarts. David, the first thing that I notice is how high the fruit sits. It's as if the fruit it just wants to sort of jump out. It looks great. Let's see how it cuts. Looks like some real craftsmanship there, David. Thin crust to get the pastry that even all the way. It's a little finesse. Let's see how it tastes. That nice crispness to the pastry. The pastry cream could have been just a tad softer. The fruit, if you're gonna cut thick, have them all thick. That's the consistency, and yours has that consistency. All in all, quite impressive. Andrew! Yes, sir. How do you feel about this? Uh, I'm actually kind of proud. Uh, this is something that is so foreign to me. You know, this is a mighty fine looking tart, considering you've done it in 45 minutes. I think it's a very good effort. I mean, it looks good. It looks very good. You have very nicely precise cut on your fruit. I try to get everything as uniform as possible. It's crispy, thin, it's even. But the, the pastry cream, unfortunately, it's a bland. I can't taste the vanilla at all. It lacks a little taste. Not so good. Lynn, how are you? Good, how are you, chef? Oh, look how exact that is. It's beautiful. skimp on the pastry cream, did you? No, sir, because it tastes yummy. I don't, I don't find any faults in this tart. Thank you, chef. You just keep getting better, Lynn. Thank you. The crust is, I mean, it's like, it's like a machine did it. The cream is light, thin crust, and again, 45 minutes. I've never made one of these before, ever. So I'm actually surprising myself every day that I'm here. Keep doing that, and you might land the biggest surprise. Thank you, Chef. Cody, yes, Michael? So you came tearing up here in the final seconds and just made it. I did. Is that a time management thing? I don't think so, Chef. I wanted to make sure that I had the best dish that I could present in the allotted time. Hmm. You don't like raspberries? They didn't make it to the plate. Uh, that is an oversight. <laughs> this is a replication challenge, right? Pastry cream, light. I think that could have been just a tad more.
more so the fruits had up a touch in it. It was a replication challenge. No raspberries. Have to see. John. Hello, Chef. It looks like you duplicated the fruit really well. Thank you. Keep surprising me with those big hands. I don't know how you do these little dainty things so well. Pastry cream? I mean, there's almost nothing here. Yeah. Definitely skipped on it. The tart is perfectly cooked. It's crisp. I only wish it was a little more cream and more balanced. And there's just not a lot of the glaze on top of the berries. A few areas that could definitely be improved upon. your desserts, and we now need a few moments to discuss. Wow, some outstanding tarts there. Incredibly impressive. Near perfection. Looks are absolutely important, especially with a French fruit tart. The taste has to be there. The quality of the pastry cream, precision of the fruit. Okay, that's all. Replicating a complex French pastry is no easy feat. And some of you, nailed almost every component in the way they looked and tasted. Those standout tarts belong to David and Lynn. Thank you, Congratulations Chef. to you both. Please take off your aprons and head to the gallery. I'm safe. I can breathe easy. I'm so proud of myself. I'm in the top eight. Cody and John, today you showed the drive and skill that have gotten you this far. But we have to send two of you home. All of you made a valiant effort. All of you made mistakes. And we are left with a difficult decision of determining which mistakes were the most fatal. John, please step forward. But I can't go home now. We deeply admire your fighting spirit, and we admire what you did today. Take off your apron. And head up to the gallery. You are safe. Cody and Andrew, we're sorry. You are both two of the best home cooks that have ever graced the MasterChef Canada kitchen. Cody, for someone of your age, your level of cooking is truly awe-inspiring. And we know that this is just the beginning of your journey. Andrew, your ability to push yourself to innovate has consistently impressed us. And we really hope your time here has inspired you to pursue a career as a chef. Please come up and say goodbye. <laughs> I'm so grateful to have this far. It's beyond my wildest dreams. We're talking about Andrew. That's good. Spectacular. This experience has fired me up. You think like a chef, and you're cooking like a chef. I'm going to become a chef. I've grown so much since stepping into this kitchen. What I've been able to achieve here is a monumental success. Cody. Woo. Delicious. It's flawless. Thank you, Chef. <laughs> it's been a once in a lifetime and a truly incredible experience. Yes. Next time on MasterChef Canada. There are two mystery boxes. And there's one big surprise. Chef Graham Elliott. Howdy, home cooks of Canada. Are inspired to up their game. It's Tammy versus Sabrina versus Jennifer. It's gonna be a battle. It's not your finest hour. It is time to take.